Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we will take a look at the allowed host configuration in our settings file to make our application secure from HTTP host header attacks. And we will also explore how to set up a custom domain for our website. So without further ado, let's first inspect the settings file. So we go to our core folder and settings.py. And here we have our allowed host variable. When we first install Django, this variable is empty, like that, which works fine locally. But in production, we have to declare here hosts. If we add the asterisk here, it works in production as we have seen, but it means we allow any host to access our website, which is not secure. Instead, we should always explicitly list here the hosts we trust. So first, let's add the domains we use locally. We have the local host. Then we also have the IP address of 127001. And now we also add render as the host. So it also works in production. And render gives us here this environment variable, render underscore external underscore host name. So when we are on render, we can access this variable. When we create our custom domain later on in the video, we will also add that domain to this list. This allowed host configuration is important to prevent HTTP host header attacks. Let me quickly explain how they work. We have here our user who wants to connect to a website. The web server associated with the domain name, also referred to as the host, is specified in the HTTP request header. This ensures that when the backend processes the request, it knows where to send the response to. In a HTTP host header attack, however, a malicious actor intercepts this HTTP request before it reaches the backend and manipulates the host header to point to a different domain. As a result, when the backend processes the request and sends the data back, it unknowingly sends it to a malicious domain, to which the hacker has access to, potentially compromising sensitive information. That's why we specify all the allowed hosts in our settings file to prevent this from happening. Another security measure our web server might need is the CSRF trusted origin configuration. And here we add render as a full URL path. And I'm using here the asterisk to allow any subdomain of onRender.com. Again, later on we will also add here our custom domain. By specifying trusted origins, Django can control which domain or subdomain are allowed to perform certain requests. So CSRF stands for Cross-Site Request Forgery, and we're using the CSRF token already in our forms. Now let me quickly conceptualize how a CSRF attack looks like. In a cross-site request forgery attack, the user is logged into a website. The hacker crafts a special link or a form to trick the user into interacting with this malicious forge request, typically hosted on a different domain. Then this malicious request is sent to the backend, including the browser session cookie of the logged in user. The backend now processes this request as if it was genuinely initiated by the user. This can potentially lead to malicious actions, such as changing account settings or making purchases. So our CSRF token in the forms prevent this from happening. The CSRF trusted origin declaration is one additional layer of security which we might need to secure our application on some web servers. All right, now that we have set up these configurations, let's purchase now a custom domain and see how we can connect it to our website. We can choose from a lot of different domain registrars to buy a domain. My favorite is Porkbun because they offer very competitive prices, easy setup, and they have a very cute logo. So let's go to porkbun.com.
then we create an account. Okay, now let's choose a domain. I'm choosing awesome-flickr.pix. Awesome, this domain is still available and we also get a great discount for the first year. I click checkout and here we see that optionally we can also add an email address for this domain or a web hosting service. It also comes with a free who is privacy which protects our personal information online as well as a free SSL certificate to make the URL secure. Now the URL is being created and there we go. Now this setup process still needs around a minute to complete. A few moments later. Then we refresh the page. And we see our custom domain. Awesome. Next, let's connect it to our web server. I click this DNS link here. And I get a configuration page. So before I go further, let's get familiar with some domain management concepts. So first we have DNS. DNS stands for Domain Name System and translates a human readable domain name into an IP address. Then we have the A record. This stands for Address Record and is a type of DNS record that points to an IP address. Then we have the alias. This is a type of DNS record that points to another domain. Then we have CNAME. This stands for canonical name and is a type of DNS record that redirects the root domain to a subdomain like www. And then we also have TLS or SSL. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security and the predecessor of it is the Secure Sockets Layer. And this establishes an encrypted and secure HTTPS connection. All right, let's see this in practice now. So here on top we choose the type of DNS record. Instead of the A record, I'm choosing here the alias to point to my website domain on render. Then the host here refers to the subdomain. We keep it blank here for the alias. Then we have the answer. Here we add the domain we want to point to. For this let's check out the configuration for custom domains on render. I go to my live site. And there to settings. Then I find the custom domain section. And add the custom domain. Then save. And here Render tells us to create two DNS records. One with just the root using the alias DNS type and another one with the www as a C name to which the root will redirect to. Okay, let's do that now. I copy this URL here. Then back to Porkban. And add the URL in the answer field. Then we have the TTL here which stands for time to live. Not to be confused with James Bond's No Time to Die, of course. And this number shows for how many seconds the domain server is caching the site. This is used for improving our site's loading time. We can leave this at 600, which is equivalent to 10 minutes. Ok, and then we click Add. But surprisingly, we get an error message here, telling us that this record already exists. So if you scroll down to the bottom, we can see that two records have been created already. Porkban made these automatically and are used for web hosting on porkban.com. However, we host our site somewhere else, so we have to get rid of them and point our domain to render. Now I click the Add button again and the record is added. Great! Now we add also our CNAME with www, pointing again to our render domain. I'm changing the DNS record to CNAME. In the host field I write this time www. The answer is again our render domain. 
then I'm deleting the record here and add the new record. All right, that's now done. We can close this page now and we have to wait for the connection now to be established. This can take around five minutes. A few minutes later. Okay, it's time to check it out. Awesome dash flicker dot pics. And here we go. Our website is now registered with a custom domain. And if we inspect the URL, it even uses the TLS certificate already. So the HTTPS URL. This is something you would normally still need to set up with your domain registrar. However, Render is fully managing this for us. Everything just works out of the box, which is fantastic. Now that we have a custom domain and are connected to our web server, let's add this domain now to our allowed hosts list. Let's go back to our settings to py file. And before I add the domain to our allowed hosts here, I will show you that if we deploy right now, we will get a server error because our backend doesn't recognize this domain yet. So I deployed now the code before adding the domain. And if I refresh now, I get a bad request 400 error. But if we try to access the site using our render URL, the website is still up and running. Okay, let's add our custom domain to the list now. So here are the comma. And then in a new line, I add my two URLs. So one with www dot in front and one without. All right. And we also add the domains to our CSRF trusted origins list. Like that. So here again, I'm using the asterisk to include all the subdomains. All right, I save this file and I deploy it to the server. Okay, the code is deployed. Now let's refresh the browser. And the website with a new domain is working now. Awesome. All right, this is all for this time. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will look into the site's SEO configurations and we will also add some website analytics. I hope to see you there. Until then, happy coding. Bye bye for now.